Good evening, everyone. I hope you're not too warm considering the weather. But well, we're going to get a bit spicy here. And I'm going to ask you all a very important question. Are you ready? Okay. What if I told you that the way we have all perceived democracy so far is a trap? What if I told you that the way we have come to deal with international development is a trap as well? You're all probably now thinking, who even is this lady on stage? Oh, don't fear. I've got you. I will explain everything. So my story starts uh, a few weeks ago. I was invited to form part of the Iberian Forum of the European Youth Parliament. For those who don't know, the European Youth Parliament is an organization that was founded in 1987. Its goal was to create active citizenship to create conversation in which often the debates that go on in the European Youth Parliament actually get sent to actual parliament members. But to be truthful, uh, my participation in the European Youth Parliament didn't start there. It started when I was 16 years old and I was a representative for my school at the time. And when you're 16, life is a bit more complex than you think, because that year for me was the year I moved to Spain. As we mentioned before, I am Venezuelan. And unfortunately, that was a year in my life of social and political unrest in my country. A year that would culminate in my father being held at gunpoint for our belongings. Something that is unfortunately common where I come from. A year in which my mom and I would pack our bags, leave our family behind. Many who I hope are watching that I haven't seen since then. I was very happy though because I love Europe. I love Spain. And when I got chosen to represent my school that year, I was excited. But not because I was thinking of social injustice or even climate change, but more for personal reasons. Because at the time in my life, I had decided I want to be a writer, but not any kind of writer. I wanted to be like Malala, like Maya Angelou, like um, the freaking Sylvia Plath of our generation. Easy, easy stuff, you know, just casual things you just achieve when you're 16. <laughs> so I thought maybe if I can participate in the European conversation and put Venezuela on the international stage, it'll change things. The expressions I had heard that year, such as, hmm, is Venezuela a city in Italy? Or, <laughs> oh, you have food on your plate. How does that feel? Because in your country, there's none. Would become just a distant memory in my head. But that's the thing. Here we go back to democracy and this trap I was discussing before. Because we have been conditioned to believe that everything in our lives is a competition. At that time, I thought I can win if I can get Venezuela on the map. If I can make our voices known in Europe as well. And I started realizing that this competition is everywhere. The nuclear arms race, the Cold War, the last slice of pizza on the plate. We are always competing for something. The narrative of history being defined by winners, or in this case, losers. So when I didn't get selected at the time to continue being a representative of the European Youth Parliament, Wow, <laughs> I was shattered because I could not see how, if I didn't do this, I could make a change or even that my voice would be heard. Now we fast forward a little bit. And again, this is going to be a bit of a time travel situation. So just stay calm. It'll all make sense at the end. When I was selected to be at the Iberian Forum, it was a surprise. 
I never thought that I would be involved in this again. And the theme we were talking about that day was development. The question was, how can the EU help those furthest behind first? For context, the furthest behind is a term that was established by the UN when dealing with issues of international development and that the EU has pledged to follow. And I remember vividly staring at another Venezuelan who I had the pleasure of sharing in committee and feeling that silence, that burden, because that's what being an immigrant in Spain had always felt like for me. Carrying the silent weight of an entire nation on your shoulders. But this was not the only day where I started thinking about democracy and reflecting on words and terms and memories. When I was 13, I started a group called Rayito Esperanza. For context, um, Rayito Esperanza means ray of hope. And to this day, I still haven't found a phrase that describes the best because I was only 13 years old. Um, it started when I was 10 and it was just a group of school children. We would make cupcakes, we would make handmade soaps and we would sell them in our neighborhood to fundraise for school, local schools and other organizations in my country. But there was one day that specially stood out for me. On Christmas Eve, our goal was to give away toys. We had raised up enough money at the time to give a full donation to a school. The school, for context again, was in the southern part of my home city, Valencia. Like many schools in my, in my country, um, its infrastructure was bad. They didn't have access to electricity, to water. The classes would take place in only one classroom in small groups because there was no space. But here's the thing. When we walked into that classroom that day, the children that were sitting there were the happiest I had ever seen. They were joyful. They were happy to be there. They were ready to learn. And I had, I confronted myself with my own privilege because me being Venezuelan and living in this situation, I had access to education, water, electricity, such privileges in the world. And I had never felt that happy to be at school. And then something even more interesting happened. Um, one of the foundation groups that was there brought in a bouncy castle. You know, one of those square things where you jump. <laughs> and there was a young girl sitting in front refusing to take off her shoes. This young girl changed my life forever. Because in a way, when we approached, she would refuse and would refuse and would refuse. And when the adults stopped asking her to try and get into the bouncy house, she said to me and my cousin at the time, it's not because I don't want to take off my shoes. It's because it's the only shoes I have. And so then back in the Iberian Forum, we were tasked with understanding the furthest behind and defining the term furthest behind. And all I could think of was, how ridiculous is the phrase, put yourself in other people's shoes, when so many people in the world don't even own a pair? How can we understand inequality if we cannot even understand the small concepts? And so again, I started thinking and thinking of this memory, racking my brain to try and understand how can I define democracy? How can I define inequality? in a way that does not exclude people. And I found another memory that was in 2016. And it was the last donation I did with my youth group. We went to an elderly home and we were in charge of putting on a show. Entertaining, you know, my friends started dancing, singing for the people that were at the early elderly home. But as you can probably tell by the fact that my hands are shaking a little bit, I'm more of a behind the scenes person. So very bravely, I snuck away and I looked for somewhere else to help 
that didn't involve me being in the spotlight. And that's when I stumbled upon a room. This room in particular was very eye-catching because there were paintings all over the walls of natural treasures from my country and even from Europe. <laughs> and in the middle of it all was a man. And this man also changed my life because one of the workers from the elderly home came up to me and told me, speak to him. And I was like, I'm 16. I don't know what, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> so I just went, lovely paintings, which is very creative, I know. But then it started a conversation with somebody who I now call Angel. And we realized we have so much in common, this man and I, because we had lived our lives looking out of a window, a memory of life through paintings, through art, hoping to see the world outside because that's the reality in my country. You can never really see yourself exploring or seeing any other reality. And then he said words that would break my heart because it was time for me to go. And all that he could say to me was, thank you because my family abandoned me. You are the very first person that has come to visit me in the past 15 years. Thank you. And I have not forgotten and I will not forget because here everyone is the answer to our problem, is the answer to this question of how the EU can contribute to those furthest behind. It is not by trying to win a race that how we have conditioned to understand it is not by running ahead or just trying to come up with solutions, but rather listening, making a space like we're doing today through this talk, through other European um, initiatives such as European Youth Parliament, Erasmus Plus. It is only if we all sit down and listen to the voices of those that are being directly affected by the problem that we can find a solution. This year, 7 million people have been displaced across European borders. But unfortunately, um, that's only a 3% increase from the past years. So 7 million, like 500 times as real, <laughs> is reduced to 3%. We cannot keep on doing this. We cannot keep on trying to understand inequality through a lens that makes something so big, individual stories, just a number. The EU has been trying their best and doing their best to tackle these issues, especially with Ukraine. But there is still the problem that we are still not in involved enough. Is, an is there any Venezuelans here in the room? Please raise your hands. Exactly. Ooh. We are also part of the European conversation. I am both Spanish and I am both Venezuelan. I am not one or the other. And in understanding this is how we can fulfill what democracy needs. Because ladies, gentlemen, non-binary people, here is where the answer is. Democracy is creating space. Creating space for young voices that are not just the mainstream, but more than that. Democracy is in facing the truth and being brave enough to be vulnerable. Because it's terrifying to be here and telling you about my life when many of you will think, oh, she's not even European, but I am. And finally, democracy, more than anything else, is the little race of hope we find along the way. Thank you, everyone.